using magic light to create spark is our topic today on Luminar Coffee Break. Let's see what we can accomplish in 10 minutes or less, starting now. Hey everyone, so the Magic Light extension was just released today. So if you have it, I'm gonna show you a couple tips and tricks. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna dive right in. So here, here's a perfect example on how to use Magic Light. Remember, we're gonna create a beautiful spark, so to speak, on this lantern, but the focus of this shot, the leading character of this shot is the gentleman in the canoe. And then the crow behind it, look at this. And then you have the back. This is a really cool, I wish I took this photo. Um, this photo here is an absolutely amazing shot. To it. Just look at, look at the how it adds all this cool uh, moody effect to it. Now, we can't let a new tool overshadow what we're trying to accomplish. So this magic light, as brilliant, as an amazing as it is, do not overuse it. Remember, we're gonna use it in a supporting role. And what I mean by that is simple, watch. If I do this, why? Because we can, and it looks really cool. Look at this, that looks cool. On its own, that looks cool. But now the focus is no longer on the man, the crow, and the background. Now it's on the light, and now the light became the leading character. Well, that's not what we want. So it's good to go to extreme just so you can see what you're doing. And here's my beam width. Look at this. I, I, I want to make it look like it's spreading. And here's the glow. Oh, I like that glow. Now, we don't want to go too clean because then it looks like the starburst. We want to look, look at that. We want it to be just like this. And the number of beams we can adjust. I'm gonna go back to here. And of course we could rotate it the way we want it. All right, so that's looking pretty good, but you know what? Let's take that clean this down and the size of it just right about there is good. That's, oh, look what we're doing now. And most important, dial it back a bit. All right, let's look at it before. After, now we got that glow. Now we got the glow that we're looking for. That looks great. Well, now we have to increase the light source on the subject's face. So let's come down here to our portrait tools. And with face, oh, our favorite. Look at that. Now we're going to use face, a uh, light, just to bring light back onto the subject. It's he's so far away, we're not going to be able to really use the eyes and the mouth we can, but it's not that big of a deal here. I like where this is looking. If we want to finish it off, <clears throat> excuse me, let's do, um, you know, let's go to the tone tool. Under creative, toning, highlights. Yeah, I want to, oh, there we go. Just want to get a little more blue into this scene. Shadow, same thing. All right, but it's entirely up to you, but that, that looks pretty good there. And then um, while we're at it, why don't we just put a little vignette onto it. He's our, he's our main focus. And I just want to dial back some of this. Yeah, that looks good like this. And while we're at it, just pop a little inner light. Ooh, that's looking good. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful. So here we are before. Now watch what's going to happen after. You see how that plays a good leading, it plays a good supportive role to the lead, leading character. Because you know what's going to happen. Just like when Sky Replacement first come out, people are gonna say, oh, this is hokey, because what they end up doing is they'll take something like this and they'll just go overboard. They'll take magic light, 
Look at that. Oh, wow, look at that. It looks totally fake. Of course it does. Because you went overboard on the scene. Now, we got that out of the way. Out of the way. I actually have extra time. So why don't we do this? I'm going to show you one of my favorite ones. Oh, here we go. And you know what? Let me start fresh. There we go. All right, so here we are. Now we're going to apply magic light again. And, and I love this shot. And, and all of you know, as photographers, to get that starburst effect, you have to shoot at F16, F22. There's features you have to do in camera to get this shot. Well, if we look at this particular image, I mean, it's a beautiful shot. But notice it was shot right there, um, F9. So shot at F9, and it was 18 millimeter lens, but the key there is F9. We're not gonna get a starburst effect shooting at F9. So let's use magic light. Here we go. I'm gonna make it intense. Now, here's what I really wanted to show you guys. And all I'm doing is just adjusting it just a bit. Now. We know, <clears throat> excuse me, that this is going to look good. It's close to the camera. We'll, we'll adjust a few things in a moment. But these lights in the background, because they're so much further away, <clears throat> they're not going to have the same intensity. That's where masking comes in. So I'm going to use my brush mask. But instead of going at 100%, let's dial it back a bit. So these lights back here... Starburst effect could be gradual, definitely gradual. Good. And actually, you know what I did? <laughs> I hit paint. So instead of restarting again, let me just invert that. There we go. And we're back again. You see what I just did there? So I accidentally... Uh, use paint instead of erase. We want to use erase in this. All right, and I'm going to bump up the straight just a little bit more, and I want to erase just a little bit back here. And then this is going to be a little tricky. I want to get rid of some of that here. Of course, not as pronounced. There we have it. All right. So let's look before and after. Before after and again we were able to accomplish that because we built upon other lessons we developed with masking the spark that's in front of us we want that to be predominant because it would be had we have photographed it with the f26 f16 to f22 and the lights in the back wouldn't be as intense not to mention the fact by doing it this way our mind is focusing within the scene so there we have it, the new magic light. And to me, it's it's like a starburst AI effect. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. Carl, let's open it up for discussions. And if people could raise their hands. So we have Nick first. Got one moment, let me pull him up. All right, and here we go. Nick, oh, beautiful background. Hey, good morning, V. A quick Good question. Uh, would you use this tool early on in your editing process or would you wait till later and, and then make your adjustments on the, on the lighting? Beautiful. So as you know, with some, some of our tools, you do have to be careful. Um, let me get to this here, desktop. There we go. And so some of the tools, you do have to be strategic on your editing, your editing process here. All right. So for this particular event, you saw what we just did here. Let's say we went in and we did enhance. Now notice, in this case here, I mean, boom, it's gonna take that enhancement tool and apply it on top of the the light. So notice, look, look what it's, oh, look at that. If we did it the opposite way, then it could look a little weird that 
you're placing it on top of all the edits you just made, all right? So the best thing to do is strategically uh, experiment with it and see, you know, if I put it here and then I apply, let's say, uh, an another effect on top of it, what will it do to that particular starburst? Will it make it look fake? Will it make it look good? And, and again, that's where experience comes in. Um, it's n Unfortunately, Nick, it's not one of those clear-cut cases. I can't say... You know, in all these situations, do this. In these situations, do this. It, it's one of those play it by ear. In this case here, um, I, I like adding it first with what we just did and then applied some of the other effects on top of that. It works for this image. It may not work for other ones. So you have to experiment. In the future, I pray, 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 pray that if we could reorganize these, we could just drag and move it down to another layer so we don't have to start over again, that would solve all the problems with what we're trying to do. So, all Good, right. Thank you. You bet. All right, who else do we have ne next? Next up is Dale. Good Dale? Or, oh, there he is. It's bad Dale. Dale's, yeah. All right, here Dale. we go. Bad Dale. <laughs> okay, so... Um, just just a comment I tried this morning on just real quick to look at it. And I realized that you can't or I couldn't use that on a sunset for the sun. It didn't, no. it wouldn't find it only finds lights. So I yeah. can't use it on any light source that hence the sun. And I would need to yeah. use the sun tools. That's my assumption. Perfect. Yeah. And, and, and I'm glad you brought that up, too, because decide what. OK, so man man made lights. No, no, some. Some of the ambassadors and some of the uh, affiliates, they actually went in and added light to certain things, but it wouldn't work until they exported it, then brought it back, and then applied the starburst effect. So it's one of those, why do you want to add that to the sun when we already have the star, and we, are, we're, we already have a tool that does that for us? You see what I'm saying? So you get to decide... Uh, the start, where is it? The um, sun rays. So we have our sun rays tool. Here. Well, in this case, what I had was a sunset that just had, uh, uh, just peeking through some trees and a house. And I wanted to try to expand it. Gotcha. And, yeah, so, uh, so it, I would use sun rays. That light source. Yeah, I would use sun rays, dial back the sun rays itself, but increase the glow. And you're gonna, you'll get similar effects. Right. But I have to match the I'm, color then. That's the challenge. Yeah, which you're right. You're right. So that, that, that's where this, but with yeah, with the sun rays, you can adjust the colors. But you're right. This is AI where it takes on the color. And that's pretty cool. Awesome. All right, Carl, do we have any other questions? Great. All right, guys. So what I'm going to do is we'll wrap it up here. But please, for those of you that are here, stick around for the Ask Me Anything segment. And for everyone else, thanks for joining us, and I'll see you at the next Coffee Break.